Honestly, Octavia, you're a nice girl. You're like my sister. You, you are like a sister to me. You're adorable and cute. I want to protect you, not not more. What are you asking? We're friends. I'm taking care of you because you're in my party now. We have to save each other in battle more than once. You're out of line. I took you into my party to fight, not to flirt. <laughs> Oof, that's, that's pain. Okay, what are you asking? We're friends. Harry smiles warmly. Yes, thank you. All right, enough talk. Fresh bread and clean sheets await. Time becomes distance. Ooh, what's happening? Blake, listen. There's well, since you just dispatched the bandits with such skill, maybe you can help us with another problem. There's a feral swine living here in the woods. Not a normal wild pig. We're talking about a vicious boar. It's big as a beer and wicked as a devil. The locals call him Tuskata. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Many hunters have lost life and limb to him. Backel Benson found his lair and went to kill the beast, but came back with one leg. He put a bounty in the boar's hat. It looks like there aren't any heroes around here bold enough to claim it. Maybe you would write us. Maybe you would rid us of this monster, not write us of this monster. <laughs> and Miri lives, lives up. Hey. We are better than the local versus, right? Wanna bet I can chop off this Tuskoat snut with a single swing? Come on, let's find out. Do you think we have enough to do with... No, no, no. No. Alright, let's go kill this Tuskoat. Mira gives you a white grin and slaps your shoulder. Right. That's the way I like it. Let's do it. Actually, no. We, we won't do it. Not anytime soon. <laughs> There's still something else we need to do. <laughs> Alright, give Moon Radish. Does this look like a radish you were looking for? His face brightens and he rips his sights in satisfaction. Yes, that's it. Hey! There's even more than I expected. Thank you so much. Take this. You deserve it. We're at gold. Useless. Would you buy more Frankberries and more Moon Radish if I brought you? Wait, let's do this. Why do you need Moon Radish? Broken blushes heavily and cocks into his fist. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. That, that's for Oleg. He sprained his back last summer, you see? Tried to move a heavy chest all by himself. You can't even imagine the healing powers of these radish. They make a great painkiller ointment. Potent. Exquisite. I just... Uh, <laughs> he, he's using it as Vi Viagra, huh? Oleg would never confess his reins to anybody. I see him wins every time he bends over to pick something up. Oh man sighs. A bit too loudly. Oh! When will the poor man realize he's not 15 anymore? <laughs> he's so lying. <laughs> Would you buy more fangbears and more radish if I brought them? A sly smile spritz on Broken's face, glint in his eyes. Sorry, my friend. After you took a wall walk through the ca that cave, there's nary a spider left. So now it's safe enough for me to gather the berries myself. Rather than pay someone else any time I need to cook dinner or make a potion. The packet of moon radish will be plenty for me, um, for me to help Oleg for a long time to come, I mean. <laughs> oh, my friend. It's okay. It's okay. It's not your fault. It's your body. It's, it's nature. Absolutely okay, my friend. Tell me what you have. Alright, actually, I want to sell here first. Step, step. Hmm. Tell me about the way that Sheila and uh, and about her paladins. She has a good supply of beauty and art. Her paladins and blah 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 blah. Didn't I read this already? I don't think so. Harry tries to contain her feelings, but her inner contempt bursts forth. They are fanatical defenders of ruthless, inartistic paintings and meaningless apostles. If you care to know my opinion, Jesus. You speak of Sheila with such contempt. What did the guards of beauty do to earn your anger? He's been trying to ruin my life, Valerie snorts. Really? 
the goddess of everything usually that ever existed in this life. All the beauty in the world, all the art, all the soulful sights and moonlight. I will never feed a single family. <laughs> oh boy. I beg you to restrain yourself from offering your own opinion. Trust me, I've heard everything you can tell me, more than once. Nothing and nobody can change my mind. Barry looks at you with suspicious. As for Shiro, Shaylee, she's the goddess of idlers. I almost joined her Presbyterus in Turach. I'm just glad I was smart enough to denounce her while I still could. What do parties on Shiro usually do? They wander around seeking the next pile of garbage. When they find it, they call it an immortal piece of art and admire it until they are blue in the face. You might not believe this, but the paladins of Shirin aren't allowed to slay their enemies if they beg for mercy. Can you guess why? It's a band that rapist, rapist or murderer who has been put to the sword will never be able to create something beautiful in the future. So paladin overpowers their enemy in a battle, then inspires them to create a masterpiece. What? Valerie's face reflects extreme disgust. Might sound hilarious if it weren't true. Plus, all of Shili's followers are obliged to practice some sort of art in his, in his or her free time. Every single day, no matter what else is going on, even if you're feeling sick or hungry or sleepy. Otherwise, according to the clerics, you lose your connection with the goddess. A presbyterous notion, then you agree. I understand that not every piece of art is good, or even decent, but surely there must be at least a few great works among them. Is that what you think? Valerie curves in a row, mocking amazement. Can you share that delusion? I was deluded too for a while. Now I consider all works of art useless. People create this garbage because they have not nothing better to do. Jesus Christ lady, I am I like to draw myself, so get up. The peasant doesn't paint a picture. He plows the earth to feed his family. The soldier has no time for sculpture. He must defend his homeland. The islers and slackers have plenty of time to waste, so they smear canvases with paint. Imagine they've done something worthy and valuable. Or shakes her head in disapproval. Jesus, I'm getting cold out here. I don't like this. Stop it. I say that every party must practice some... There's something in my screen, I can't read it. Some kind of art, okay. What kind of art did you pursue? Ah, that. I used to embroider. I used to do from time to time. A trash of splash covers Valerie's cheeks. It's nothing I assure you. Just a simple task to keep my hands busy and keep the gloomy thoughts at bay. Nothing special. I couldn't agree more. If I can't be frank all the time, I would treat him a little bit. Okay. I'm leaving. Trail me. Oh, Keston. Keston Garris, before you stands a heavy set man with grim, determined futures. His weathered face is crossed with several scars. Yet they do little to mar his appearance. His gaze is heavy, but he avoids eye contact. He's ever afraid of unwittingly sharing whatever burden weighs so heavily upon him. We already talked to him. There's nothing new, fortunately. Nothing new. Nothing new. Xavier! Aww. All cats. What do you want? Have a little chat? Alright. It's not like we have anything better to do. Tell me about yourself. What is that you now? I was born. I'm alive. I haven't died yet. That enough for you? <laughs> do you remember your childhood? Rangonga skulls. What a crap question. I was just a kid when they sold me. Before that I don't you don't remember much. Smoky fires, stinky heights, always bumping along on a horse. He was born in one of the colored tribes of Numeria. There are many. Some survive on their own. Some give up their pride and serve the Technic Leech. I guess mine was one of the cowards. They sold their own kids. I remember my father's hands. Rough, scarred, white. So I guess I get this green skin from my mother. But I don't remember her. I think I remember playing with another half-orc child. A brother, a brother maybe? 
For some reason they didn't sell him, just me. But I gave him his dagger to play with. Never gave it to me. Fuck. I don't want to remember. Look at all this. I'm an orphan. Rengoku waves his hand fairly. Really, 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 really. I grew up a slave. That I remember well. So maybe things burned into my memory. Most of all, I remember her, my Octavia. Today we are almost the same age. Back then she was twice as young as me, just a child. What a brave one, cunning, bold, and beautiful. The most beautiful girl in the world. <laughs> oh, yes, it's bad. What deity do you worship? Ha, I never got much help from the gods so far. But if you make me choose, I'd say Calistria. Who else could I worship? The savored sting, the goddess of pleasure, fun, and revenge? Oh, yes. <laughs> Where did you get your magical powers? What magical powers? How are you talking about? Oh, you mean these? Ringoga makes lightning run over his hands with a content smile and snaps his fingers, invoking a shower of blinding sparks. I had, I've had them since I was born. At least one thing I can thank my scum parents for. Maybe these powers are why they sold me to slavery. Think they were scared? Who knows? Damn Marians. But technically, they drew my blood. Did experiments, burned me with fire, tortured me with cold electricity. They told me, you won't believe it. They told me I have blue dragon blood in my veins. Not bad, huh? A dragon, you freaks. <laughs> you can jack my blood, if you dare. Grinning wreck strikes his palm with a fist, and another fountain of electric sparks shoots upwards. What did you what do your tattoos mean? They, he has tattoos? You can see them. They're magical. They help me control my powers. The Technic Leech gave them to me. I'd hoped that somewhere on my body there was at least one sign left by my tribe. But no. I guess they didn't care to bother. To hell with them. But I hope I never find them. If I meet my father, I will even score between us. I will even the score between us. How do you manage to use both a sword and magic and not cut off your fingers? <laughs> hmm, it's simple. Just that bloody good. Half a gives a content grin. <laughs> He's a cocky bastard. Do you enjoy making people suffer? Ooh. <laughs> Why should I care about their suffering? I do what I want. I step on someone's toe. Then they shouldn't have put themselves in my way. But chasing someone down just to torture them? That's only entertainment for maniacs. Like the technique glitch. Well, on a second thought. <laughs> hmm. For them I would make an exception. I love to watch as I fry them down, as I fry them nice and slow. But why do you ask? Do, do my methods shock you? Ringo clenched his fists, buzzing with sparks and laughs loudly at his joke. <laughs> it seems to me you're no more than a compelling woo. If you treat your enemies like that, what makes you better than them? Once in my party try to control yourself, I for one enjoy them torments of others. Very amusing. You're right. Someone gets in your way, blah blah blah, no. Ugh. I don't want to be mean. Alright, if you treat your enemies like that, what makes you better than them? Why would you think I want to be better? What does that even mean? I have no delusion of purity. Don't need to prove to myself or my enemies that I'm better than them. Morally? Spiritually, whatever. I just want them rotting in the ground so I can live, drink wine, and piss on their graves. <laughs> Thank you for your answers. That was very enlightening. Thanks, Don Fuller Purse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Tell me about your life in Numeria. You mean my life as a slave? I didn't see much, except for the slave barracks and the leaks twisted laboratories. How did you happen to become a slave? I was sold by my own tribe. I was just a little brat. Hapa clenched his teeth and spits on the ground and steps on it with his boots. So I grew up in a slave barracks. I was raised to be sold like a battle animal. They tried to break me, but they picked the wrong brat. No matter how much you beat this animal, it only gets angrier. The half orc punches himself in the chest and snarls. Why did your master teach you magic? Can't you guess? This magic is my blood. That's why they bought me. I wasn't raised as some lowly mob slave, but as a murder machine. I'd fetch quite a nice sum gold. 
You might also ask if they knew I'd taken the first opportunity to rip their own guts out, using everything everything they taught me. <laughs> of course they did. That's a technique they calculate risk 